With the release of the Nintendo Switch, a bigger focus on portable consoles has come back to the public's view. But what if you own some 200 games on Steam? Are you really going to buy all of them now for another platform? Well, luckily, with the GDP win, you don't have to. This little guy is a full Windows operating system computer in your pocket. That's right, no Windows RT or stripped down features, just the real deal. This means Steam, Origin, Battle.net, and the oh so great Uplay are all runnable on this little machine. So is a tiny Windows gaming device worth it? The GPD Win comes in a few different models. One of these models is still in development from the makers, and when I tried to look up the newer fanless model, I couldn't find any for sale. The model with the fan comes in three different sets of processors. We have the Intel Atom X5Z8500, X7Z8750, and the X7Z8700. From what I've seen online, the difference in performance is very small with the Z8700 coming out on top, very slightly. My GDP win came with the following specs. An Intel Atom X7Z8700, clocked at 1.6 GHz, an Intel HD 405 integrated graphics chip, 4 gigs of LP DDR3 RAM, clocked at 1600 Hz, 64 gigs of eMMC flash storage, and an HD 1280x720p by display, as well as the national version of Windows 10 home operating system. Just like in my previous video, I've split the review up into a few separate categories. We'll have design, display, audio, battery, and gaming. The design here is a mixed bag. Some of the parts feel very well built and designed with a gamer in mind, while others feel very cheap and hollow. It makes me often question the resilience of the machine after a year or two of ownership. All the gaming buttons felt great to press and never got stuck during my gaming sessions, but the triggers on the back could honestly fall off at any time. They wobble and even stick inside after a few clicks. The analog sticks move well and don't click like an Xbox controller. The GPD Win has done this to keep the device small, and the buttons that mimic these moves have been placed at the far right side and named L3 and R3. The directional pad is fine too, not the best I've ever used, but certainly better than the mushy directional pads found on some knockoff brand controllers. It has no ports on the front or side, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. All the ports here have been moved to the back, and I'm very happy with the selection they gave us. From left to right, we have a USB Type-C port for charging, a mini HDMI port for video out, micro SD card slot, which you will need to use since it has a very small amount of flash storage, a USB 3.0 port, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. I ran into an issue with the USB Type-C port where the unit wouldn't charge if you transitioned it from being on to off with the AC adapter plugged in. You had to remove the cord and plug it back in to keep it charging. Weird. Regardless, we'll move on. The front and bottom of the unit have vents that are all positioned to exhaust heat from the internal components. Both vents were placed in areas that didn't get easily covered with my hands, but did get very hot over time. The GPD Win is outfitted with a few neat and well thought out buttons and switches. Other than the standard mini BlackBerry S keyboard in the center, the Win has a strip of buttons located on the right. Here we have the power button in red, an Xbox home button that works just like an Xbox game controller in game, a separate volume up and down, a L3 and R3 I mentioned earlier, which also acts as a left and right click for the mouse, and finally the start and select button, which is found on an array of other controllers. My favorite buttons on this though are characteristics I have only ever seen on the GPD Win. It has two controllers that change the fan speed and presets for the keyboard and controller. The switch under the display allows the user to turn off the keyboard, mouse, as well as the controller, use the analog stick as a mouse in desktop mode, and change to controller mode. I really like this as it made it very easy for me to switch between game and between desktop. They could have also done this through a software, but I don't think it would have turned out nearly as well as it did. The other switches on the back side controls the fan speed. The fan is audible at full volume and you will notice it in a silent room, but if you're in something like the cabin of an airplane, it'll be drowned out. This is something I wish a lot of portal devices had as it makes it extremely easy for the user to decide when they want the fans to be going loud, like if they're gaming, or when they want the unit to be silent, like if they're on an airplane watching a movie. If you didn't already notice, the mini computer does not have a mouse pad. Instead, the right analog stick serves as the dedicated mouse, and although it was a pretty good idea, it's not nearly as accurate as you would have hoped, and it makes it very hard to click on anything on screen. The good news here is it is a touchscreen, and anything you can't hit with the mouse, you can certainly touch with your finger. The screen is a 10 point multi-touch and the wobble wind use was barely noticeable. The screen itself had very little flex and it's certainly built to last. 
The hinge is solid and can stop and lock at one adjustment point. I would have liked to see more than just this one lock point and would have hoped they had done something like the new 3DS by adding several different locking points to the screen. The hinge goes a full 180 degrees back and it didn't feel like it would break even when pushed past 180 degrees. The display is an HD 720p panel with very good color and clarity that's still clear at very extreme angles. The 720p screen is below the average that we've come to expect from a full Windows computer, but on such a small screen it's not an issue. In fact, compared to something like the PS Vita or the 3DS, the screen is very pixel dense at a 267 pixels per inch. The screen is covered in a glossy finish and sports a Gorilla Glass 3 material that should withstand a few hits and some light drops. At full brightness, the screen is very bright and even visible in the sun, although I wouldn't recommend it since it's very glossy nature. The audio here is not good. It's very loud at full volume, but still sounds pretty bad. It lacks virtually any bass at all. Here's how it sounds. The worst part about the audio is actually where it's placed. They decided to place the one speaker on the front right side of the device. If you want to listen to audio while playing games, forget it. Your palms cover the speaker no matter how it's held. Alright, here's where I get into a little bit of a rant. This isn't mainly an issue with the GDP Win itself, or really an issue with the Windows operating system, but more an issue with the size of the GDP Win and the applications that run on Windows. The Windows 10 OS wants to run the resolution scale setting of 100%, and this makes all the apps open as they should. Steam opens fine, and all the browsers open fine. But because of the small 5.5 inch display, all of the Windows features in all the apps are tiny. Here's an example. If you change the scaling options and make the size of the taskbar correct, some apps don't scale correctly and you end up with something like this. I don't know if I'm missing something here, like a setting in Steam, but I couldn't find a happy medium. So I guess I'll either be squinting at the small text or having correctly sized tabs with applications that I can't fully read or access. The battery life is generally pretty good here. I don't have any complaints about overall performance for such a small device. The capacity is 6,900 milliamps and it scored a 6 hour and 2 minute long run in PC8 Mark's test for creatives and professionals. The GDP Win is paired with the Intel HD 405 graphics card. And this is an integrated chip that's not nearly as powerful as even some older models of graphics cards like the R9 270s or the 750Ms for that matter. And this means that some older games will run on all low settings, but when you get to newer games, you're going to run into a lot of issues. All the following tests were run in the native 720p display. Just like in my previous videos, we'll start with a skydiver test. This test was challenging for the unit and it scored a 1,240, better than 1% of the results. I would certainly hate to be that 1%. I didn't run Firestrike here. The GPD wind would crash after a minute or so of testing and instead went for a CloudGate 3 d Mark run test for home PCs and Windows notebooks. The computer came to a 2,515, which was higher than 6% of the tested devices. For the sake of a steady video, I used an external controller while recording to test a few games for the overall performance. First was Fallout New Vegas, which ran on a low preset at 29 frames per second. Then I ran Batman Arkham Asylum, which on low presets averaged 33 frames per second. Any newer and more graphically intense games were not playable. I tried to play some Sleeping Dogs as well as GTA 4, and the games were unplayable constantly, dipping into the 20 frames per second at best. Alternatively, you can also stream from a compatible PC. I used my desktop with a GTX 1080, and this worked wonderfully. I tested out Fallout 4, and it ran with minimal delay over my Wi-Fi. The GDP is certainly an interesting device, but after reviewing it, I kind of wonder who it's for. It's at a weird price point, where it's not quite cheap enough to compete with the Nintendo 3DS, which is somewhere around $200, and it's not expensive enough to compete with something like the Razer Blade, which has a lot better raw performance. I don't know if the GDP is a good buy for you. If you need something really niche and small that can do games at a sub 30 frames per second that came out in about 2010, it'll certainly do the job, but maybe stick with something like the Nintendo Switch on this one. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, go ahead and leave me a like, and if you want to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, I really like doing this. It's something that I've been doing in my free time along with what I actually do, and uh, I would love to keep doing it. So if you have a chance and you want to support the channel, 
please go ahead and do so. Thank you so much.